So, hey, it's you free. Um, I have a little something special today I wanted to do. Um, this is for myself, rather, <laughs> more than anybody else. Um, but uh, I wanted to kind of do something. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know me, uh, I'm Yuffie. I'm a streamer, uh, usually on Twitch. Um, the, the, if you're seeing this, this is my VOD channel. Uh, so it's a little bit unusual for me to be doing something like this. Um, but uh, I am moving to France in uh, pretty much exactly a month from the day of recording. And I have a lot of feelings, a lot of thoughts, and a lot of emotions. Um, and usually stream is kind of where I go to talk about that sort of stuff to experience. Um, but as of this point, I have not been streaming for about a month, uh, just in preparation for moving. As you can see, there's moving, whoops, there we go, moving boxes behind me and everything. Um, it's been a lot, uh, and a very, very busy. So, um, I'm on a break from streaming. However, I was thinking about how I could, um portray my experience, uh, and kind of journal to myself about how I'm feeling and where I'm at, and perhaps in the process kind of, uh, open, open a conversation, uh, from a, a maybe different perspective than other people have heard before. Uh, I, so, sorry, so yeah, um, <laughs> don't mind me if I lose the track of where I am in places. I'm not the editing kind. I stream, not make videos. Um, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but basically, I wanted to do a little bit of a journal today. Um, and I will might make this two parts, depending on how long I end up going on for uh, chit-chatting. Um, but I really wanted to talk about like my experience, who I am, where I'm going, I mean, with caveats, I'm not going to be super specific, but, um, because the, the people I have seen online, uh, Americans who are going to France don't really represent most of the time who I am. Um, and I want to see more of that and maybe hear more. Uh, and on top of that, just with all these emotions and things I've been feeling and fears and expectations and all this stuff, I just wanted to kind of talk. So I thought I would record this here now, um, for you guys and whether you're, you know, from my channel, if you do care to listen, uh, or if you are new, please, uh, I guess, enjoy a little bit of something unusual, uh, <laughs> Um, and maybe if you're in a similar situation, we can all chat about it in the comments. Um, if this even gets seen by more than a couple people. But anyways, um, so yeah, I suppose I'll get started with it now. So, some, basically, I guess to get started, uh, I am from the Midwest, Wisconsin specifically. I'm pretty open about that usually. Um, which means that I am not from a big city. Now, I have had my fair share of experiences. I've visited a bunch of the major cities of the U.S. I've, uh, I've lived in Tokyo for a period of time. Um, I lived in Japan for, in total, about a year, multiple six-month chunks studying abroad, uh, in high school and college. Um, but I grew up in, like, the biggest city we have in Wisconsin is, like, not even 600,000 people, Right. So, and I'm more of a suburban girl. So, like, my experience has not been, like, this huge city, this major thing. Um, a lot of the people I see online are typically, like, from, like, ooh, I moved from New York City, I moved from Houston, I moved from L.A., right? Um, because those are major population centers. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of people going from there, and they might be more outgoing and more willing to talk online, and I am not that. Uh... And I feel like that means that I come from a very different perspective uh, with moving and living. I am going from a small town, or not not small, it's not tiny by any means, um, it's still bigger than plenty of French cities, uh, bigger than when I'm about to move to, but um, you kind of get the idea. It, it's a different vibe. A lot of people compare like New York and Paris. I'm not doing any of that. Um, and speaking of not doing that, I'm also not moving to Paris. 
I am moving um, about, I'm moving to the southwest of France. I'm not going to be too specific, but it's about like 30 minutes from Bordeaux, which in American terms, 30 minutes isn't that long. It's not that far away. Uh, but in like French terms, that's reasonably distant. Like that is not like a daily trip you take. Um, whereas that's like my commute home from work here. <laughs> Um, but you know, uh, it's, it's not really suburbs either. It is, it is a little bit farther out from like, uh, Bordeaux. And so I'm going to a pretty small town, like way smaller than I've ever lived here. Um, and I've been there a few times, so I know it, I'm not like a complete stranger. Um, but I'm going technically on the Tepif program. However, uh, I'm actually going on a different type of visa than a work visa because I am married to a French person. So um, we got a VPF, Vie Privé Familial visa instead. Um, and that comes with it's a whole host of other stuff. So my planned move is permanent. Most people on go, go on Tapif just to experience, to you know teach, do all this stuff. And I'm going to be doing a lot of that, but I'm going permanently, or at least that's the plan. Uh, and that comes with a lot of fears. <laughs> and I know, and like I've studied abroad before, so I kind of know the basics. But then when I get deeper into this, like more permanent experience of living abroad, it's a little overwhelming and a little terrifying and very, very exciting too. I have a lot of things I'm looking forward to as well. But um, it it gives a lot of existential moments, I suppose, especially as of late. Um. So, yeah, that's kind of my, like, little background on my situation. Uh, we got married about six, seven months ago now. Um, and we're finally going to be moving in together in France uh, a month from now when I go. Um, and I'm going to be starting work on Tapif. And uh, that'll be at least seven months of guaranteed work. And then who knows after that. So, yeah, um, moving from Wisconsin, going to a small town France, um... I feel like I've seen enough videos online. I do a lot of research and stuff. And it's like, everybody's like, oh, this is what it's like to live in Paris, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people are like, warning, Paris is expensive, a child, all this stuff. I'm not facing any of that stuff going forward. And it's really hard to find resources that relate to myself. Um, so if anybody knows of any advice for like similar resources, similar situation, that would be great. Um, the only other people I've seen who really don't live in that area are typically like families who already have children and are, you know, in their 40s, 50s plus, uh, and that doesn't really work. I am 22, you know, not quite fresh out of university, but like relatively fresh and, um, it's different. So anyways, uh, section big section one that I wanted to talk about is really my fears so I've already been alluding to it and stuff but I have a lot of things that I am nervous to take the leap about I'm I'm taking the leap because I I am willing to and I'm interested and I want to I want something different than I have in the U.S. and I've done a lot of research and it looks like France is, is really going to fit what I want but there's a lot of things I'm really terrified about too um, the first of those things being um, finding work. So sure, I have Tepi for seven months, but A, it's part-time work. To those who don't know, it is only uh, 12 hours of work a week. Um, and you get a bunch of time off, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But that comes out to a, like, after they take the CQ from your paycheck and stuff, it's like 800 euros a month. It's not a lot of money, um, and it's not a permanent solution either. Uh, even as an American, you can max out three times doing it. Um, and so I have, like, yeah, basically, ideally, I only do this once. I would probably enjoy doing it multiple times, but I don't know. Um, that being said, it's really like a, it's a very impermanent solution. Um, and I think I would have this concern anywhere in the world, no matter, you know, whether I was staying in the U.S. or I was going abroad to a different country. Um, finding work is always terrifying and I am well aware of how intense both the U.S. finding work environment is right now and the French one. And I am at a major disadvantage of I'm not nearly as good at French as like, you need to be often for work. I certainly can't get a typical French job and be expected and capable of doing stuff. Um, I also don't have a master's yet. 
which apparently, if you're going to work in France these days, you really need a master's, which is beyond frustrating. At least it's cheaper to get than in the U.S., but you still have to pay for it, and you still have to make it through more schooling and not be working once again, which is just... Um, it's scary. I hope that I can talk to the right people and find the right prospects that I can find work, but I'm just kind of worried that once Tepif ends that I'm going to either have to fully rely on my husband or I'm just going to have to drain my savings in hopes that I can find something. I know people who spend six plus months looking for work and it's like, ugh, I'm not sure I can afford to do that, you know? Um, but that's part of it. Um, another fear I have is the struggle to fit in. I am well aware. I, having studied abroad multiple times, I know how hard it is to fit in. And I've also been watching research or like doing my research on France and the fact that people already tend to have like preordained friend groups, basically they've had since childhood and it could be really hard to fit in and stuff. And it's great if I'm going to have international friends, I don't mind having international friends, but I would also like to like genuinely be a part of the community, have French friends and stuff. And I already really struggle on a social level in real life. It has taken me years to build up to where I am. And I have like a couple friends here and there, a couple in-person friends. Um, and that's already hard in the U.S. And maybe, maybe I'll be lucky in France. Maybe I will find the right people right away. Maybe my personality will attract people in the right way. But I have no guarantee of that. Um, and again, the unknown is terrifying. Change is terrifying. Losing my friends here is terrifying. Um, I know I'm going to be okay. I've always been okay. I always will be okay. And I have my husband for support. I have my family for support. It's going to be like... But when it comes to, like, I can logic my way through that all I want, but the emotions are still there, you know? Um, another major one is uh, my language not being good enough. I have struggled with this feeling of insufficiency for years. In French in particular, I have only been studying for two years and only had a couple formal classes in it. Um, and I would say I'm relatively good. Uh, like, I'm probably... I. I would say I'm almost guaranteed I would pass the B1. Probably not the B2, but I'm getting close. Um, but that's like, again, not fluency, not not where I'd need to be for work, all of that stuff. Um, and I've been learning Japanese for years and years, and I am still not to a point where I feel truly comfortable. Um, I'm good at Japanese. I tutor in it and stuff, and I'm, I'm proud of what I do know in it, but it is not the same as, like, true fluency, true understanding. Um, I'm never going to be a native speaker, and that's a, a challenging concept to wrap my head around. Um, and I don't love the feeling of insufficiency, and I really hope that this doesn't become a severe limiter for my future because I find it really important to express myself and be capable of doing that and also to fit in. You need to know a language and all of this stuff, and that's so hard to do when it's not your native language. Um, and I am so terrified that I will never be good enough at French. Um... I'm terrified I'll never be good enough, period. <laughs> I wonder how many of us experience that feeling. Um, yeah. Moving on, just, I'm, I'm, I've heard about France that, like, pay, and, and in Europe in general, is lower than in the U.S., and now cost of living is also significantly lower in the U.S., but I do have this constant fear of being on my own, living on my own, I mean, not fully on my own, I have my husband, but, like, to an extent of, like, I have to pay my own bills, I have to, uh, work in order to live, um, in a way that, like, I've only just started doing quite recently. Um, and worrying about not getting as much money because I'm in a country that just doesn't quite pay as much and stuff like that is terrifying too. I'm worried that, you know, I'll use up all my savings on moving and then just be, just be constantly worried about the next thing that happens, right? Now, I don't have to be worried as the same way as I am in the U.S., which is a good thing. I have, I'm going to have health care. I'm going to have coverage. It'll be okay. Um, in a way that it, you never have that safety in the U.S., but it does, like, concern me, and I'm just crossing my fingers that, like, 
on the tapis salary of 800 a month, we will be okay and that I will be able to find work. I don't know. It's, I'm droning on about a lot of the same stuff over and over, I suppose. Um, and it's okay to be scared. I think all of us are, um, especially early on in life, but I just, I, I don't know what the future holds and, um, more than anything, I think I'm, I'm worried about that. Oh, yeah, I have gone on for a little bit, so this might be a lovely cutoff point for a part two. Um, so if I'd, <laughs> I don't know if I'll do that, but um, whatever, I'll just go into the next part anyways. So the next thing I want to really talk about is, um, or, or rather the second major thing I wanted to talk about is my expectations uh, for France. Because there's a bunch of fears. Great, lovely, wonderful. Um, but I have some expectations. And if I'm going to be journaling, I want to journal right now what my expectations are of like my life uh, in France. And then I want to come back to this in a few months and maybe make a response video to myself of like, yes, no, how, like, how did everything pan out? How does everything pan out? Maybe, you know, a few months after moving and maybe like a few years after moving, right? Um, I don't plan on stopping, fully stopping content creation anytime soon. So hopefully I can continue to do that. So um, I guess I kind of want to paint a picture of what some of my expectations for my life will be for you guys. Uh, so first of all, we've been daydreaming about this for a while. We, my husband and I, we sometimes talk... Uh, about um what we're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis and i breakfast every morning i imagine fresh fruit croissant or croissant if you care um i don't know why but this this image just like a light but sweet and lovely and delicious breakfast and and sort of healthy at least because you got your fruit in there is such a delight. I doubt I'm gonna follow through on this, but like at least I can believe and imagine like something tasty and filling and wonderful every day. So it's just something I want so bad. Also, I want to have a cheese board, and like we've already been planning on what type of cheeses we want on our cheese board. Like we want camembert, and we want um I want bourson, which is apparently not traditional on a cheese board, but it's my cheese board, and I don't care if it's non traditional. I want bourson on my cheese board. Um, probably some conte for my husband or um, uh, there's this one type of chef that I've found that I like. I don't remember what it's called, but I'm going to find it again and I want it on. Like there's a bunch of things. Oh, coulomier. Um, bunch of things. <laughs> and and I'm just imagining having a cheese board and like enjoying some baguettes with my husband uh, during the day. And it's wonderful. Um I'm imagining, like, hopefully teaching will be fun. I'd hope, like, that, you know, I hope that I like my students. I hope that I like my coworkers, that maybe every once in a while we'll go out, like, for for a dinner or something. Um, hopefully my students will be cool, that I'll be able to actually do something good with them. I love teaching. I've, um, you know, tutored plenty in Japanese. I've never done it in English, but I can hope that it'll be fun. Um I'm going to have to get a little less casual in my English conversation, but <laughs> I think it'll be a fun time and like, you know, going every day, biking, biking to work and um, teaching students and then coming home and cooking, uh, cooking a delicious meal, having, having lunch with my husband. I, I love cooking and I am so hoping that like I get the opportunity to really like make both of our lives like really fun with trying new recipes, doing old ones, figuring out how I can make American recipes in France. Cause you know, I'm from the Midwest. We got a lot of casseroles. I need to figure out how I'm going to make a cream soup for a casserole, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I just, I, 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 that's kind of my imagination of like my day to day. Right. I'm really hoping that my language will improve. I can imagine it will. Um, it historically has when I've been in France, but sometimes it's very easy to just want to speak English with my husband. And it, it, we slide into it much easier because both of us are fully fluent in English rather, rather than, you know, him only being fluent in French while I'm not. Um, 
but hopefully, you know, I can still do stuff. I plan on doing some cooking classes with my husband's mother, and that hopefully will be a great experience and great practice, being part of the community and um, meeting new people and talking with new people and learning new vocabulary, stuff like that. I hope that that's part of my day-to-day -day life. Maybe I'll even get to go for more education. I might do a master's. I love translation. That's really my future goal, but maybe I'll go into education. I don't know. Um, other parts of my day-to-day, -day, I imagine uh, going on daily walks. I love that. Um, I really hope we get to do it a lot. There's some wonderful like forest and and there's a port and a beach and and all these lovely things near my husband's home and where we're going to be working and living and I am just so excited to just enjoy it. I've already walked like half the roads in the area in the in the few months I've stayed there in the past but like I'm excited to for that to be home and do that, you know. Um I'm as I said I'm looking forward to cooking a lot, uh making lots of fun things. Um, I really can't wait to get back to streaming. I, I don't know how often I'll be doing it, but I'm really hoping that I'll be able to like do it still. Go back to the, you know, three or four times a week. Really, really enjoy it. Um, I love video gaming. It's a great thing for my husband and I to do together. It's a great thing to just like be with my people. I, I love all of you guys who are part of my community. You make every day so much better. I've made so many friends through it including my husband, um, he streams, Scorp, uh, he'll be in the de description for sure, but, um, I just can't wait to get back to that and, and be part of that community again as well. I just hope it doesn't cause me to neglect the French community as well. I, I'm gonna have to find a balance and that might take some time, you know, but I hope that I can. Um, also, despite all of this busyness, I really hope I can still relax. I have found France to typically be a lot more relaxing and enjoyable and pleasurable than um, being here in the U.S. I'm often very stressed, you know. I was doing 40-hour work weeks. Some I, I did 12 days in a row once earlier this summer. Um, I do 40-hour work weeks, which is longer than the French work week by a significant amount, especially the work week I'm about to have, which is only 12 hours. Um, and... Uh, I completely lost my train of thought. Wow, that is that happens very fast sometimes. Um, work weeks, travel. I lost it. We're gone. All right, move again to the next point. <laughs> um, sorry. Now I'm still. Now I'm just stuck on that. Uh, hoping I can relax. Um. Oh yeah. I I just want to be able to still take it easy. I want to stream. I want to do all of this stuff. But I hope that. I could still breathe and the slower, I could enjoy the slower pace of life, right? I can enjoy those two, three hour dinners. I can, I can go with family. I can have time with friends. I can go on walks, do all this stuff. I hope that I won't be stressed trying to fit all of this stuff in, if that makes sense. Um, I really hope that like we get to travel more. I have so many countries in Europe I want to visit. I have a ton of friends across the continent that I'm excited to see again or meet for the first time. I'm hoping to meet some of you. I know we've talked, uh, I've talked with a few of you guys already about meeting in person. Um, Germany is really high on my list right now. Spain, because of how close it is, is quite high. I want to go back to Sweden. I would love to visit Norway, um, because we actually had like a few generations ago in my family we had a family farm there and uh some of the older generations of my family have met uh have been to that farm and met met my you know family I would love to do that I want to um go to Finland I want to go to um Greece uh, I there's everywhere I would I want to get out and experience uh everything that Europe has to offer because I've visited most of the United States and so now it's time to go visit most of Europe um so yeah I'm looking forward to that Another few expectations I have that are a little less like what I'm kind of dreaming of my life, but more like a little concerns or things that I do really expect to be, you know, part of it is I expect that it's going to be challenging to make friends. Um, I already have a challenge with that, as I said earlier, and I expect that that is not going to be the easiest part of life. And that's okay. And I'm, I'm willing to accept that and understand that. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I don't expect it'll be an easy process, but hopefully my winning personality works. I don't know. Um, 
at the least I hope that I could you know I think I think I'll be able to be more friendly with some of my husband's family I think that uh, I've already met them once or twice and they've already been quite welcoming and I think I can build some relationships at least there and my coworkers, from the very little I've met of them so far seem quite nice so I'm kind of looking forward to that uh, I think that's my best shot at friendship um, but I don't expect it to be easy um, and I I'm just kind of coming to accept that and that's all right but I'm still gonna try <laughs> Um, and then the other thing I really expect to see, uh, kind of basing this off of my prior experience studying abroad, um, is just having frustration with the culture, um, frustration with not having certain foods. I've already found fr some frustration in my inability to find black beans in France. I don't know why they don't exist. They're, they are so good. They are the best bean. Ugh, and Mexican food. Ugh. Mexican food. French tacos, don't damn cut it. French tacos are more literally anywhere else than they are Mexican food. Like tacos are supposed to be. Ah, uh, I need my I need uh, my birria tacos. I they're so freaking good. And my refried beans and I am going to miss that. Um but also just frustration with the bureaucracy. I know I'm going to have to deal with that. Everybody has to deal with that. I have not heard a single person not mention the French bureaucracy. Um I know that there are going to be day-to-day -day just differences, differences with the, you know, the friendliness of the culture and stuff like that that is going to frustrate me. Um but that's also a part of living anywhere. I think every single person has at least some gripes with the culture, no matter where they are, whether it's their home culture, whether it's their external culture. Um, I think that's just a part of dealing with it. And I, I expect to find some frustrations. I'm curious in future journal, uh, future me, what I will find those particular frustrations to be from my perspective. Um, so far, funny enough, I haven't completely hated the French bureaucracy. I have not had the worst experiences up to this point. But um, maybe that's because of the particular bureaucracies I've dealt with in the past, those being American and Japanese. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just a little bit more tolerant of shit because of that. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think that kind of sums it up for now. At least that's, that's what I have written down. That's everything here. Um, I have some other fears and some other stuff like fear that I don't have the right documents altogether or for X, Y, Z, my gut decision will be denied in the future. But like, we'll see. Maybe I'll make another journal <laughs> labeling some stuff later. But I think those are, those hit a lot of the big points. Um, yeah. So I appreciate you listening. Uh, if, if this does somehow get to the right people, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Even from my community, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I mean, if you're part of the Discord or whatever, just DM me. Uh, you don't have to put comments on the, the channel. But if you feel like you have, you know, you live in Europe or France or you have some relevant points, um to talk about or discuss and if you want to or are comfortable posting that publicly feel feel free to do that here in on the youtube channel as well um i'd love to have some discussions if this really does get heard by anyone um maybe i'm just yelling into the void uh but that's okay because you know what this is a little cathartic and it feels nice um and yeah if you like this, I, I, this is me, uh, maybe a little less, a uh, happy bubbly excited me. Um, not that that is any less me, um, but more just due to topic and nature of the video. Uh, but if you like it, feel free to check out some more of my stuff. Um, I mostly play video games, but sometimes I do some other things. I've done cooking streams. Those are fun. I highly recommend checking out those because I love to cook. And if anybody has recipes they want me to make, let me know. I love cooking. Sorry. I could go on about that for days. Um, I love language learning. I love a lot of things. I am a very loving person, I would say. I'm a very happy person. Um, I have my moments. I am a, a very anxious and terrified person sometimes too, but I don't let that get me down, or at least I try not to. Um, and this has been a nice experience to just get it out. Uh, if you made it this far, damn, well done. You have some impressive ass, uh, attention span that even I wouldn't make it through this. The only reason I'm making it through this is because I'm the one talking, but, um, 
I would I would laugh if anybody made it to the end. That would be impressive. But either way, um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. I, I don't think I'm going to make a part two. I think I'm just going to do this all in one one big painful blurb. Um, because that is me sometimes. <laughs> just one big word vomit, right? Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, and uh, I guess I'll see you in a few months. Have a good one. Bye-bye.